Here's why and how you need to get fit even though you're super busy. One of the things I hear the most is I can't because I'm busy or I'll start getting fit after this travel or after my school's done or after my crazy work chapter gets a little bit more chill, right? X, Y, Z, this is one of the most common things I hear and I wanna debunk this for you if you're one of the people that is telling yourself that you're too busy to do this or you're gonna wait until X, Y, easier condition in life to start executing. I wanna debunk that belief for you because it's gonna hold you back and it's gonna hold you back for the rest of your life. So you're gonna to wanna to listen up. Here's why that belief needs to be debunked. First of all, let me acknowledge this. Is it easier to execute, especially with your health and fitness when life is easier or when you have less school or less work or you're not traveling? Yes, of course it's easier. It's much easier. But what happens the next time life picks up again? What happens the next time you travel? What happens in your next school semester? What happens the next chapter of your career where you get super busy and have to work long hours? Then you fall off because you've taught yourself that you do not progress when life is busy or inconvenient. You've taught yourself that you must wait until life gets more convenient in order to execute. And so what you sign up for when you do that is falling off every time in the future when life gets busy or you travel or work gets crazy, etc. And so if you want to avoid falling off every time that happens, you have to learn how to maintain bare minimum momentum during the hard times. And I actually tell people, if you're in a hard time right now, if you're going through a, a busy work chapter right now, it's actually a great opportunity. It's actually almost the best time to start because if you can teach yourself or be taught by someone else how to progress during that busy time, think about how much easier the easy times are. If you can progress when you're working long hours or when you have school or school plus a part-time job or when you're running your business and have to take care of your family or you're traveling or whatever your circumstance is, if you can learn to progress during times like that, then in the future, easy times are easy and the hard times you know how to handle, you know how to navigate them. And so that's the why the belief needs to be debunked. I hope that made sense to you. I hope that got through to you. Now, in regards of how your habits or standards or commitments don't necessarily need to look the same compared to when life is easy. For example, when life is easy, meaning you might have more time, etc., you might be crushing hour long workouts five days a week. You might have more time to read. You might have a more consistent sleep schedule. You might have more time for this, more time for that. Right. And you'll have a certain set of standards and habits you're committing to. When life is crazy and you're working super long hours, maintaining progress doesn't necessarily mean maintaining the exact set of standards and combinations and duration of standards that you commit to during the easy times. You might only have time for four 20 minute workouts in a week at your house because you don't have the time to go to the gym for an hour for five times a week. You might have to do meal preps if you don't have time to cook. You might just want to do 10 minutes of meditation as opposed to half an hour. You might want to consume your books through audio on your commute if you don't have time to read 10 or 20 pages each day. Right? So these are just examples, but you can condense your commitments to match the hard time to make it more feasible. Instead of committing to eight different things, it might only be three. But the point is you keep the ball rolling, you keep your execution consistent with the things that matter the most to enough of an extent where you can still make progress, if not just maintain momentum. Right? Doing five 20 minute body weight workouts aren't necessarily gonna help you create your dream physique as opposed to five hour long workouts in the gym each week, but they will maintain momentum. You're not gonna regress. You can keep the intensity high. You can, you can hold the line such that once that week is over, that two weeks is over, we have to go through some crazy work hours, you can get back into routine, not having really lost any ground. And this is the point. You can still read two pages a day instead of 10. You can still feed your mind. You can still eat healthy. You might have to just be more organized around your diet. You can still get in your water intake. Let's say you are trying to lose 20, 30, 40 pounds and you're like, wait, my life is way too hectic right now. You'd be massively surprised of how little time it actually takes to lose weight. In fact, on a bare minimum level, it takes less time. It takes less energy because fundamentally you're gonna be eating less food and you can lose weight without doing any more activity if you just eat a little bit less. But let's say you do wanna implement some activity, which you should, even if you're super busy, even a 10 minute walk, if you're doing nothing right now, is a great addition. Like a 10 minute daily walk would be beautiful for you. But chances are you have time for more than that, right? So maybe like five 20 minute walks or five 20 minute workouts, just bare minimum stuff, body weight, using some basic machines, etc. And you can lose 50 pounds just doing that, allocating like 20 minutes a day. And yes, it does take time, 20 minutes a day, let's say 30 minutes a day, but is that worth it for you to sacrifice 30 minutes a day in order to lose 50 pounds, 60 pounds, 30 pounds to take back control of your health and your fitness, right? This is a matter of priority. We make time for what's important to us. So you also have to ask yourself, 
is where are you allocating time right now that is really not serving you? Chances are you're scrolling on social media for an hour or two hours each day, right? You have time for that, but you don't have time for fitness. Priorities are slightly offset there. And so look at aspects of your calendar and of your life where you're allocating time to things that are much less important than your health and fitness. But the punchline is no matter what you're going through in life, you can and should prioritize your fitness to at least some extent that you are maintaining momentum, if not progressing towards your goals. So again, that's why you should do it. And also the general of how you should do it. Again, the specifics of the how will depend on who you are and what your goals are and what you want to achieve and where your starting point is and what your exact circumstance is. And if you would like direct guidance and support and mentorship to progress towards your fitness goals, whether you have a crazy schedule or not, feel free to click the link down below to book a call with me and we'll have a chat. We'll meet, talk about what your goals are, what your specific circumstance is. And we'll talk about what the exact strategy would be for you and to see if you're a good fit for our program. But besides that, whether you book a call or go off and execute on your own, do not let this limiting belief hold you back anymore. If you get super busy or life gets super crazy or you go through a bunch of challenges, ask yourself what bare minimum momentum habits can I initiate or maintain right now despite this hard time? Whether it's for a week or a month or a year, and then hold the line, maintain momentum, because if you can learn to progress in the hard times, your long-term goals actually stand a chance. So that's my message for you guys today. Again, I hope that made sense. I hope it resonated. Feel free to comment down below any questions or takeaways you guys have about this idea. And besides that, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.